All right, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today we are going to be building a couple quick trellises for our square foot gardens here. Um, as you can see, the RPs, uh, they are kind of in need of some support. And I've got three of these boxes with peas run all the way down the side here, and so we need to make some trellises. Um, generally, these things will grow up to four or five feet tall on a trellis. Um, I'm going to try to make the trellises about four feet tall, and if they you know, grow up about a foot off the top, I'm fine with that. So. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it as usual here, starting with some scrap uh, pieces of wood and things I had laying around here to try to build these. And I'm going to use a little bit of a different technique for the actual trellis. So stick around and find out how we're getting these put together. got a bunch of scrap wood here from uh, actually a solar uh, pool heater that I uh, decommissioned for this summer. We're uh, using the area of landscaping around the pool and it just we needed to get out of the way so I'm going to rebuild this later on but uh, I'm going to use all this wood so some of it's stained and uh, some of it is not spray painted and things like that so I'm going to rip this all down to inch and three quarter sections so right down the middle of the two by four here so we get uh, two sections out of each one. I've got some boards here that are almost four feet and then some that are eight feet. So I'm going to rip this down as best I can, and then uh, we'll have to do some painting to kind of clean this up a little bit once we're done. Okay, so in the corners of our frame here, there's a couple different ways that you can join join boards together like this. You could use a butt joint, which is basically just something like this, or maybe we'd run a screw, you know, one or two screws in through the top. Um, screws do not do really well in end grain of uh, wood, and then so you'd have to use a really long screw to get a good secure joint. And plus, when you have things leaning like this and blowing in the wind, it's going to loosen that and, and probably end up breaking it over time. It'll just be really flimsy. Um, the other option I, I thought of I may do for other ones is putting a hinge on the inside here so that uh, at the end of the year we could take these apart and fold these in and then take them down. Um, so that's another option that we have. Uh, but right now what I'm going to stick with I think is a joint that I use quite often if you watch any of my other videos. It's just a half lap, half lap joint. And basically that allows these two to sit on top of each other securely and we'll run two screws through um, and also some wood glue and that'll give us a very secure joint. And so what we need to do is just kind of shave down each one of these uh, boards uh, halfway here and so that they'll fit uh, nice and, and flush together there. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this off and we'll get that cut with a circular saw and then chiseled out with a chisel. Okay, so first thing we need to do here is just get the depth of the blade set to usually do just shy of three quarter inches because we'll chisel it out a little bit. Okay, so we've got our half lap joints all chiseled out here, just kind of a, a really rough, uh, rough chisel. It doesn't need to be super smooth. And we're just going to make sure that these angles are as square as possible. And we'll use a countersink bit here to pre-drill a couple holes. So we can get a nice flush surface. You definitely want to pre-drill pre -drill when you're working with wood this small. And we'll get a good amount of wood glue in here, fill in those gaps for us. The wood glue is going to pay it, play a pretty critical role as far as the joint is concerned. Um, it makes sure that the uh, joint doesn't loosen up over time. 
when this as this moves in the wind and things like that. So it's using a couple one inch wood screws here to secure this together. And just let that glue dry. All right, once we've got these all painted up and uh, let the, the stain dry, we're using deck stain on here so it kind of seals the wood up a little bit. And I'm also using some two and a half inch uh, deck screws here to secure it to the boxes. Okay, so once we have everything secured on here, I'm just gonna make a mark every three inches down the center of the outside of each support. And then we're gonna come back and drill a small hole at each one of these marks. frames all securely screwed up to the square foot gardens here and we're ready to put in the actual trellis portion of this. Now one of the things my wife and I didn't want to do was get that kind of lattice mesh that um, the wooden mesh that you can get to put up on these. Uh, we wanted something that was gonna be kind of more invisible or something that really would take away from the look of the gardens and would look good in the fall time too when there's things not growing on this. So what I chose to do is go with a fishing line instead and I'm just using a 60 pound uh, single filament fishing line. It's very inexpensive. I think it was just a couple dollars at uh, Walmart or, or whatever home store you want to buy it at. Um, and so I think this is going to work out really well for, um, for these small you know, plants to grow on. I'm going to use this for our cucumbers and for our peas. Now if you wanted to do something like cantaloupes or you know some other type of really heavy fruiting vining thing, you want to get something a lot thicker than this 60 pound. But uh, you know I got, this is 100 yards, so I think this is enough to do at least three of our, our square foot gardens here. So I'll show you how I'm kind of winding this through here and what it looks like when we're done. much the finished product here and I really like the way it looks the, the fishing line makes it look almost invisible from most angles so um, you know you just kind of see the the plants growing up and it looks really good so um, you know I'm really happy with the way it turned out they're very strong they're very sturdy I don't think we're gonna have any issues with it you know blowing over because it's real windy or the weight of the fruit or anything like that on it. I think this will be good so um, I still have three more to build on the far boxes there uh, on the other side that I'm going to be growing some pickling cucumbers and that on. Uh, and again, I think that the, the fishing line is plenty strong enough to hold up the weight of, of those vegetables. So, um, But uh, as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear about those. You know, what do you guys use for trellises uh, on your square foot gardens or raised bed gardens? Uh, there's lots of different ideas out there. I know there's lots of pictures online and stuff like that. Um, I'd love to hear your, your ideas and comments about what you think about this. Please hit thumbs up on the video as always. And you can also check us out on our website at simplesuburbanliving.com and follow us on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram where we're constantly putting out different, uh, different things that we get from other uh, viewers and um, other things that are going on around the little homestead here. So as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.